Hey guys, still there and welcome back to Stormworks. It's the Arctic Campaign, Episode 4, and I'm tasked with capturing a shark. Now, the current iteration of the ship that I was using, which is the Ice Dart, it simply does not have the capacity of capturing sharks. So, alternatively, I'm going to create a new boat. Something along the lines of a catamaran, so that I have enough capacity to actually bring that shark with me. I'm going to go with a catamaran design, which has a uh, net down the middle of the boat that I can sort of cast around the shark. So this is going to be quite a large vehicle, and I really hope that I can afford to bring something like this into the world. Because it is going to be quite expensive because of its size. There's going to be a lot of blocks that go into this. Now this is going to be the uh, main netting area. So this is going to be where the net goes. And since I already have the winches unlocked, I can use the winches to lower the net down. At the same time, I need to have a hole with a couple of engines in it. I just don't really know how big that hole needs to be. Let's see, I'm just spitballing here. Bear with me. I don't exactly know how heavy this boat is going to be. That's going to be the problem. Alright, so if I would go with this for the side of the hull. And then this would potentially be the other side of the hull. Yeah, I might be able to make that work. Okay. Oh crap, I didn't give it enough blocks. Okay, I'm going to have to go one wider. Otherwise my bow is not going to work out properly. Uh, now it should. Yep, there we go. Okay. Time to try and figure out if this thing is going to work. And this is what I like about Stormworks. It gives you these challenges where normally a ship that you have designed would work. And then the game goes, okay, and now I need you to do something entirely different. How are you going to approach that? And figuring out these design challenges is something that has always drawn me to games. It is the same thing for, for example, Kerbal Space Program. Where you're constantly trying to engineer something new. And once you have something working... It's a little weird, but it loses its appeal. Because you then go, okay, this works. Right, what else can I design? And the exact same thing is going on for Stormworks. Okay, so that's going to be the front of the catamaran. Um, let's see. I really don't know from where I'm going to be controlling this thing yet. So we'll just have to <laughs> we'll just have to keep designing it as we go. I think this would work. And then we could have this as the hull. Sorry, the bottom of the hull. Like that. Now, ideally, I'd fit one engine into each side. And by doing that, I'd have two engines, each with their own propulsion. Or sorry, each uh, hull has their own propulsion. It's a pretty big, wide unit. I'm going to make it a little sleeker here. I'm going to take off these blocks and these blocks. Oh, not too much. Wrap it around. And yes, I'm going to go for a flat bottom design, because generally those are by far the more stable boats. They might not be the fastest, but I don't need this thing to be terribly fast. Because it's not going to be going on any mission which is either very far away or which needs to be done extremely quickly. I still have plenty of time left to complete this op. So I'm not worried about that. Alright, that's going to be the top. See, now it's starting to take shape. Time to add the engines. I want to add the actual engines quite far up front of the boat so I can stabilize the weight of it. And, of course, we're going to need uh, both a position to generate power and to get all the exhaust ports in. Uh, I don't have any manual fuel tanks yet, I think. 
Um, do I have a fluid spawner? No, I don't have a fluid spawner. Okay. So that means I'm just going to have to go with a couple of fuel tanks. This is coolant in, coolant out, fuel, exhaust, and power. Okay, I can live with that. Could I put two side by side? No. But I could put them in like that. They're only 100 each. I can probably live with that. Never mounted engines before like this. Okay. Uh, give me a fluid port. I'm going to put one there, one here, one here, and one there. And I'm constantly working in mirror mode, so the other side of the hull is going to have the exact same layout. Pipes. I'm going to connect these things up. That is... Yep, that's coolant in. So this is another coolant in, that's coolant out, and more coolant out. Excellent. Okay, so that figures out my cooling problem. Next, we have the exhausts and the fuel line. And then we have the air line. I'm going to try and loop the air line up as quickly as possible for both, or actually all four engines, not just both. And no, I'm going to need one separator here. Otherwise, I cannot actually get my engine power diverted to where I need them to go, which is going to be the generators, which are going to be slightly further behind in the boat. Okay, you're going to loop front. This is my air intake, still. And we're going to take that thing up. Up, up, up. And I can just go with one port right over there. We now have breathing engines. Now we need a way for these things to actually expel their oxygen or expel their exhaust. Again, this is going to be an intricate piping uh, issue, but I could pipe it through the bottom of the boat probably. It's going to be a bit complex. Let's see, where do I want my fuel tanks? I want my fuel tanks to be somewhere over here. Okay, let's make this one dark so I know that this is fuel. And we're going to go up. I want a T piece over there. And you're going to loop up. And to the side. What do you mean you don't fit? Oh, never mind. I already placed one down. Come on. All right. So the fuel line is coming along nicely. Time to add some fuel tanks. I don't really have too <laughs> big of a tank. And I, again, fortunately don't need one. So I think four tanks should do it. And that's per side, of course. So that should keep these engines fed for a long, long time. Go for the T pieces here. Connect everything up. Make it one big happy fuel tank. And now I need to connect this to that. Couple straight and an angle. There we go. So now we have fuel. That leaves us with exhaust on all the engines and I can still loop that underneath everything else. It's just like playing Legos, only slightly more complex. Wrong sort of pipe. And this one goes here. Actually, let's put this in the side of the hull. Come on. Sometimes these pipes really want to fight you. There. Okay, so this one goes into this side. 
And that means that the other one's probably, yep, here. Okay, this is going to be a pipe T piece. Let me just take this part off so I can see. Yep, that's what I want. This is going to be a pipe angle. Is that correct? That is correct. And now a couple of straight pipes. All right, now we're gonna move all the way out the back and replace that with the standard pipes. And then I want the exhaust somewhere on the stern. I'm not really too picky about how that's going to look. I just want this ship to actually be able to capture sharks. And how it's going to look, well, we'll figure that out later. All right, that fixes that. Now that leaves me with one rather important element, and that is the generators. I only have the small ones, but still, that should be enough. Oh, forgot a pipe here. Small generators should be enough, as long as I get enough of them. And I think I might be able to place those up here. Let's see, how many do I want? And how am I going to fit a gearbox in here? Because the space is getting a bit tight. Weight distribution is still really nice. It's slightly to the front of the boat, but otherwise fine. How am I going to do it with the weight distribution? See, if I had a gearbox up here, I could then loop it to that. Hmm. Might be easier to just have all of these generators sitting here in the back. Um, I'm going to need a vehicle name for this. Vehicula, Russian for shark. I just need to see what sort of mix ratios I used for generators to engines. Okay, I got three generators after three gearboxes to one engine. One to three, one to three, one to three. And they are being helped by one electric motor. Okay, perfect. So I can have three generators per engine. That means that I probably have a bit too much engine power, but I can live with that. Uh, point them at the engines. Flip this one around. And flip it around again, there. Now we're gonna connect both of the engines up to that gearbox. Please tell me I'm still mirror mode. Yeah, okay, good. T-piece. This one goes up. And how far do I need to go up? Oh, not too far, fortunately. One pipe like this and one pipe like that. And now I have both of my engines per side connected to all the gearboxes. This was a one to three, another one to three, and another one to three. Right, now I need to make sure that this thing can actually spin up. And that's what I usually use a couple of electric motors for. Fortunately, I still have some of them in stock because those things can get really expensive real fast. And now I need to make sure that I have all my generators. So I had three generators per engine which means that I can now add six. Come on game, don't make me rotate all of these every single time. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, good. So this can be a standard pipe angle. All right, generator, small generator. One, two, three, four, five, and six, good. Now I have my electric um, starter motor. This thing checks what the RPM is of at least one of the engines. And if it's too low, sorry, RPS, rotations per second, not rotations per minute. If it's too low, it's gonna send an on signal to those electric motors to help get all those generators started. 
because between those two motors, they might not be able to do it. There we go. Uh, these gearboxes as well, one to three, one to three, and one to three. And I have a uh, fuel combiner. Um, I want to add up all the fuel. I thought I had a fuel tank add. Yeah, this is eight tanks. Well, that'll work. Hold on, those things are 600 each. Wow. That's rather expensive. What if I go for a standard function? Oh, I don't have those yet. Okay, let's go for a cheaper microcontroller then. I have four inputs, and those are all numbers. And I want to have one output. So that's a number output. Properties, make them a bit wider and make them less lengthy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the output. Okay, good. Now I need a function. Mm. This will work. Oh, never mind. The hell? Really? Yeah, this is what I want. Let's see, this is X, Y, Z, and W. So this is X plus Y plus Z plus W. And the solution then goes to the output. This is going to be a uh, fuel combiner. So I know what sort of fuel I have left. <laughs> Okay, that might be <laughs> might be a little rude. Sorry about that. There. Fuel. Uh, properties. What's its name? Fuel X4 combiner. Fuel X4 combiner. How expensive is that? 600 each. Damn. Okay, fine. I'll live with it. And now I can add up all the fuel tanks. One, two, three, four. And same on this side. Two, three, four. And I'll send that information up to a different screen eventually. All right. How about the stern? Because we still need some actual propulsion on this ship. And now it can generate power, but I'm not actually using it yet. Um, how am I going to do that? I think I can go for four props. So that's two props per hull side. Like that. And a rudder down there. Now, if you're placing a rudder, don't do it in mirror mode because it's going to, in effect, mirror it. But not in the way that you would like it. If I would use mirror mode if I'm placing rudders, then they're going to counteract each other. So in effect, if, in effect you still have no steering. Not handy. Um... Let's change this a bit. Okay. Now the exhaust. As I mentioned, it's not going to be anything fancy. It's just going to have to work. And there is one thing that I still need to do, and that is add the propulsion and then the batteries. So, uh, gearboxes first. This one should be pointing the other way, come to think of it. It should be pointing at the engine. Like that. One, two, electric motors. 
that's pretty much it. Now a couple of batteries. I think four should do it. Especially considering my massive amount of engine power, which is going to be generating a lot of energy for all of these systems together. Now in the back, I usually have my ladders, but with a size or with a ship this size, I might do it in the front or on the side of the boat. Okay, so now we have our basic frame. Let's see if it floats. <clears throat> That's a rather important detail. It does. It does. It's a reasonable level above the water level. I can live with this. Okay. Back to the drawing board. Now that I have my boat, or catamaran, I can go for the actual fishing equipment on it. So the plan here is to have a uh, couple of winches, which are all going to be operated at the same time, and drop one big net. So I'm going to need the winches. Oh, they're already on uh, the hotkey there. And normally this net needs to be out of the water. This is going to be where I'm going to be sitting. So this is where my seat's going to be. Again, this is not going to be a pretty boat. <laughs> it just needs to get the shark to containment. All right. Um, how am I going to do this? Then go up a couple. Because I know that that net... Or that that winch can only drop it for 10 meters. How high is this? Six blocks. Three, four, five, six. And then just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go for one more. And that's what we're going to add the winches to. So that's one and two. And three and four. All right, now I need to set these things up to, let's say, drop at three meters per, or no, not three meters per. I'm not actually sure what the speed indicator here says. I'm not really sure how fast it's actually going to drop. All right, and now I just need to get a really big net. This is going to take some time. Um, and I'm afraid there's no real fast way of doing it either, because it's not... Oh, sorry, yes, it is mirroring it. This is good. Okay, the plan here is to have the shark um, swim into the net. So he's going to come in from the front. So I'm going to have the back of the net entirely closed off. And the underside as well. I just need the front to be open so the shark can get in there. I really wonder if this is going to work. I think it will, but you never quite know. Now at the moment, the game considers this to be a couple of separate identities. Because they're separate blocks. So I'm going to say, nope, this is in fact one item. And now it's going to consider the whole thing to be one net of sorts. And finally, we're going to have to go to the front again. Same thing here. Come on. Thank you. I'm trying to alternate this to create a pretty sturdy net, making sure that it's going to be connected on multiple levels, hoping that it's going to actually be able to hold the shark. I'm not sure what the physics force of a shark is. So I don't know what sort of power the thing can actually put out trying to escape. That's going to make this a very interesting experiment. Seeing if I can capture the shark. 
All right, this doesn't really need to be too connected. Come to think of it, I might also be able to use this same craft if I'm transporting large cargo units. Just because they are, well, in a way, pretty similar. Alright, once again, merge this and that, and merge this and that. And now we have one big net. Or, well, something that resembles it, I guess. I'm going to change some of these parts. Up, up, up. I think this thing is sturdy enough as is. Or rather, I hope so. All right, continue with the bottom. Fortunately, I can use the selection grid to make my life quite a bit easier. So I can tell the grid what I want to copy and how I want to copy it. So I want it to be further behind. And I want it to be lower. Because then I can just copy and paste everything. It's going to save me a lot of time. This is pretty much the size that I want to copy. Yep. Copy. No, I need one more piece. Because currently it's a bit too close together. Cancel that. So I need to resize it one more block. I think this might be better. Copy. Yeah, that will do. Paste. Paste again. See, this is speeding up things nicely. And paste again. All right. I am burning through cash at a uh, disturbing rate. I hope that this research in, uh, installation pays me a lot of money for this contract because I'm going to be broke after I complete this up. Okay, this last piece is not required. And by the looks of it, the game doesn't quite understand that all of this should just be one part. So I need to use the merge block or the merge feature again. All right, what do you see as a separate entity? This one, join that, join that, and join that. There we go. All right, we're starting to actually have a net. Really want to see this thing in action. Make sure you don't attach it to the side of the boat or it's not going to go well. Mm, and the last one, just like that. Okay, I think that actually does it. These are the lines are not supposed to be here. I want to see if this thing works. Let's just spawn it in and see if the net stays attached to the rest of the ship. It does. It does. This is perfect. Excellent. This might actually work. All right. So now it's time to set up the whole engine department and make sure that everything is connected power wise. This is generally not the most exciting part of the build, but mandatory nonetheless, because if you don't do it, the whole thing is not going to go anywhere. And this connects all the way to the back. This connects to the engines. Now, I know that some people like to connect everything to the battery, but for me, I don't like it. it turns into a sort of spaghetti, especially with all the power lines that you're then building. And since all of my parts are connected anyway, 
for me this works. There is one caveat. If you take off intentionally or otherwise one part of your boat, then there is a very good chance that you might find that suddenly the power line gets interrupted somewhere, which is not ideal, to put it mildly. All right, now propulsion. Um, yeah, logic. A and D is the rudders. It's turning left and right. W and S. I'm not going to put this thing on cruise control, so I don't really need that. Throttle the motors, or throttle the motors. Uh, left and right, not required. Up and down is required. Unfortunately, I cannot quite do it with that. So I'm going to have to do it with the number one and number two keys. So this is going to be lowering the net. So this is cable down on everything. And push button two is going to be cable up. So this is going to be raising the net. I need to make sure these are push buttons and not toggles. This is lower the net. And this is raise the net. Now something I, I really need on this boat that I just realized is Arctic gear. Inventory. Making sure that I can actually survive this whole place. Next, I want a speed indicator. Oh, sorry, I don't have the. <laughs> keep forgetting that I don't have those. Fine, uh, a couple of displays then. This is not ideal. Um, let's see if I can beautify this cockpit a little bit. At the moment, I'm not too happy with how it looks. I don't exactly have all the parts that I need yet to make this thing look good. So I'm just going to have to try and improvise a little bit. All right, a couple of displays. One is going to be for how much fuel I have, and the other one's going to tell me how much battery power I still have left. So this is battery percentage, and this is uh, fuel left, and then fuel right. because I had those different microcontrollers, but they're not connected to each other. And it is that one. It says input, but it's really not. It's an output. It, it's the one that adds up all the fuel tanks. All right, I need to do the same thing for the batteries. And I can, let's see, I have a battery addition. Yeah, battery state is four bats. That's four batteries. I'm gonna put that on this side. This one is going to add up all the battery power from all the batteries on board. So that is charge from this one, charge from that one, the charge from that one, and the charge from that one. And that goes over there. Back to mirror mode. I might be able to put some windows onto this thing. Not that it's actually going to do anything, just more for show than anything else. But I might be able to at least keep the Arctic winds at bay for a little bit. Mm. Windows, angled windows. Turn those around. And one, I think it's a narrow window. Yep, there you go. It's not going to be any kind of contained whatsoever, but it doesn't really need to be. Now, what I also want is that if I sit in this end, or if in this sit in this seat, I need the engines to start. And for that, I have a, uh, let's see, where is it? Player board is start engine. This thing takes the RPS status and then sends an on signal per engine. And 
and I need to have two of those per side because I want them to be per engine. So that's one engine, that's the other engine. Okay, this one stands the starter signal. What's required is the RPS status, so the rotations per second. Also, the player sensor, which means if I'm on my seat, I then want it to start. So if occupied, I want it to start, start, start and start. And this is also a PID, which automatically tries to set the throttle to three. So it tries to keep the rotations per second of the engine at three. Engine throttle, engine throttle, and RPS and RPS. Okay, so that fixes that. Um, some lights, because at the moment it is rather dark in the Arctic. And I do want to have some lights on the net. If I can fit those in anywhere, that would be lovely. Maybe down here. And some in the middle. So I can see if the shark is actually getting into the net, yes or no. Underwater lights, why not? I want to toggle for all of those. Toggle button. And I can have that toggle button just over here. So this is the lights one. Connect everything up. This one goes to there, and there. Starboard. Port. And my net. So we're two there. Two here, and two in the front. Now with all those new components, I do need to add them up to the electric network or it won't work. And you go over here. All right. I can tie those to an engine or a gearbox. It doesn't really matter what I'm connecting it to. You're going to connect to the generator. As long as everything is connected, it all works fine. And that one goes to the motor. Now there's also one other logic part that I want to connect to this one. And that is the backlight for my displays. There. Now I want a dial, or actually a couple of them, because I want to see what my engines are doing. I want to see if they're actually starting, especially with a new creation. This generally is key to figuring out whether your creation works or not. Because if the engine doesn't start and you have a diesel electric boat, well, if it doesn't start, you're going to be in trouble. All right, this is uh, engine R2, engine R1, engine L1 and engine L2. Minimum zero, maximum 20. And one more. All right. The number one is gonna be in the front. Number two is gonna be slightly behind it. So number one in the front. Number two slightly behind it. And again, those things need to be toggled by the backlit thing. All right, let's save the Akula again. I think it's just about ready to take it out for a spin. Just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna add some Arctic gear onto the side. If I can flip this the right way up, that is. All right, spawn it in. It does float, which is nice. Uh, one thing I don't have on it yet are ladders. Oh, which could come in handy right about now. 
Yeah, I can sort of get on this thing, but it's not easy. All right. Mm. Yeah, that's not good. That is not good. Also, <laughs> I haven't connected up any part of the cockpit yet. Okay, so uh, for some reason or another, it won't actually start. Let's see. You have coolant, you have fuel. What don't you have that you would like to have? You have an exhaust. And the exhaust goes all the way over there, up there. So that seems to work. You have an air intake. Let's see what happens if I disengage this part. Reason for that is that I want to see if the engines actually do spin up. If I don't have um, the generators tied to them. Let's try that. Cold, 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 cold. Whoa. Nope. I might need to add more electric motors. Because I'm trying to spin up something that is really quite heavy. But at the same time, I think that might not be even the biggest of my challenges. Let's see. This engine. It delivers its power to here. Then it goes to the gearboxes. Gearbox, gearbox, gearbox. What if I set the gearboxes to nothing? I'm just going to do this for one side, so I'm troubleshooting the boat. See if this could be the problem. It's just being pushed too hard. I think that might have been it. Because now my left engines are working. My right engines are still trying to spin up. Ineffectively, I might add. Okay, I think the gearboxes might have been a bit much. However, are they even connected? Uh, yes, they are. Okay, so the answer is then to add a couple more electric motors and help these things spin up a little faster. Because I am asking them to do a lot of work. Those just few electric motors that I have. All right. Or sorry, I'm asking a lot from the engines, not the electric motors. Motor. One there and one there. Connect those up. And where's my starter motor? Over here. Those two as well. And that's this one. Start those. And then add power. Gearboxes on this side are seemingly good. Oh, that's fuel. All right, let's try it again. I can already hear it start. This is not supposed to happen. That's sort of running, but not smoothly. I think I might have my gearboxes set to a little too high of a ratio. Let's set the first one to a 1 to 1 ratio, and let's see if that spins it up. And again, it's not supposed to start until I'm on board. Do we even have exhaust? Oop. Well, we're generating power. Does it move? Alright, it does move. Now the net. 
Oh no! I made the net too tight. It's stuck on the boat. Oh, I'm gonna have to change that. Alright, we still have quite a few chinks to work out. But for now, I think I'm gonna stop it here. And next episode, we're gonna continue with the design of this ship. I like the overall idea. I just need to make sure that this thing gets a little bit more room so that the net is one block away because I think that currently it might jam on these. And aside from that, the motors, the engines, the ones that are generating the power for the propulsion are not quite working the way that I would like them to. So that's something else I'm going to have to look into. But all of that uh, will be done next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you have any ideas on how to improve the design, and I'll see you next week for the next episode.